Hey, this is Harrison from LangChain. In this video, I'm going to walk through how you can incorporate user feedback from your application to actually improve it and have it learn over time, the user's preferences and the user's desires in terms of what it wants to do. So let me show an example and then I'll walk through more of, of what's happening. So let's imagine that I have an application that I want to use to write tweets. So I'm gonna give it a simple instructions to first start. Write a tweet about the user provided content. So kind of vague. I'm gonna save this as a bot. Let me go to ESPN. Let me uh, grab a headline. Let me bring this back. Let me write an initial tweet about it. Okay, so this is fine. Now let me kind of like control, like let me workshop this. Let me interact with this and kind of like shape it in the style that I like. So I don't like hashtags. So don't use any hashtags in the tweet. Okay, that's better. I kind of like the emojis. So let's say start it with an emoji. Okay, so simple, but let's, let's say I like this style of tweet. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. What's going on under the hood is we can see that we're logging things to Langsmith. So we can go into our Langsmith logs. We can see that I have this interaction here. And so this is kind of like the, uh, the, the back and forth. If I look at the feedback, I can see that I scored it as a, 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 a one. And so I have this user score. What's going on under the hood even more is I can go to rules. This is a new feature in, in Langsmith. And I can see that I've added these rules that will basically take all a chatbot run where the user score is one and the assistant ID is this UID. So when I create an assistant in, in, in the self-learning GPTs, it gets a UID and it moves it to this data set. And so now if I go to the data set and I need to find the right one, which I believe is this one, I can see that it's added this example to it. Now, what's going on under the hood is that it's taking that example and incorporating it back into the application. So let me start a new chat. Let me go to ESPN. Let me find another headline. Let me take this. Let me send a message. Awesome. So it actually remembered the, the style of the tweet that I wanted. Um, and this is due to some prompt engineering and some few shot prompting, um, and and it it responded. Let me let me continue to kind of like iterate on it and improve on it because maybe my preferences kind of like change over time. It's not always it's not always the first thing that uh, I, I want. Let's say um, make it in the style of Stephen A. Smith. More Stephen A. Smith. All right, I like that. That sounds like Steve, something Stephen A. Smith would say. So let me give that a thumbs up as well. Um, and then let me go grab a third headline. Um, let's take this. If I go back here, I can go back to projects. I can go here. I can see that I have uh, this thing. This, this is the most recent run. I've got the user score of one here. If I go back to the data sets, I can go in here and I now have this input and output from the recent one. I go back here, new chat. I can put the, the ESPN headline I got. <laughs> and look, okay, so it's screaming just like Stephen A. Smith. Um, so it kind of, uh, so basically it's learned over time as I interact with it. I'm, I'm not doing any prompt engineering here. I'm just kind of chatting with it and I'm leaving feedback. And it's basically learned uh, to write tweets in the style of, of how I want to write tweets. So the reason that we think this is exciting is there's a few reasons. One, it, it, it allows people to basically interact with your application. This is a very simple chat application, but again, we're, we're building developer tools, so, so we're gonna make this possible for anyone to do. It allows people to interact with your application and based on feedback, you, you, can, you can log it, you can associate it with runs, you can automatically move those to few shot example data sets, and then you can bring those back into your application. So we're setting up kind of like that feedback loop. Um, this in turn is exciting because then people don't have to know how to prompt. They don't have to know how to write system prompts. They don't even have to think about what few shot examples are. They're just kind of like interacting with your application. You're passively gathering their feedback um, in, in it can be in a few forms, and then you're incorporating that back into the application. Um, 
And and so we think this is really exciting. Uh, this is very much just a research preview of some of the ideas that that you can do. This is not perfect. Um, this is not going. This is this is not perfect. It's it still takes uh, work to to get these applications to work and to actually pay attention to the few shot examples. And some models work better than others. This is actually using GPT three point five. We actually found that Claude, um, even the high Q models, uh, did did better with GPT four. You know, it learns from few shot examples even better. So, you know, there's still all these considerations at play, but we think it is a very promising path forward. Um, if you're interested, this, this will be coming generally to LangSmith in a few weeks. If you're interested in helping beta test it with us, uh, please reach out. There'll be a form uh, in, in, in the link. Um, and yeah, we're, we're extremely excited by this. We think this is a really promising way to help applications continue to evolve and, and improve over time. Thanks.